Hey everyone, uh, this is Connor here from the Gitcoin team. Uh, we have Vivek, Kevin, and a few others from our side, and we're really excited today to speak with the Cosmos team, the Agoric team, and the Band Protocol team ahead uh, of the Cross Chain Hackathon that we'll be launching next Monday. Um, and so before we dive into everything, I think we're going to go around and do some quick intros so you can hear where we're calling from and some backgrounds of who's going to be speaking. So, uh, Peter, do you want to kick us off? Sure. Uh, so hi, everyone. My name is Peter. I, I work at uh, Tendermint Inc. And uh, I'm here to talk a little bit more about the hackathon and explain why we uh, did it. Great. So, Thanks, Peter. Good to have you. Um, anyone else from the Cosmos side or should we go to uh, Tatiana? I'm not sure, Chris, Thanks, if you want to give a quick intro. Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, I'm Chris. I work at Entertain Game Meha on IBC specification and development. Awesome. Cool. Thanks for joining, Chris. Good to have you. All right, Tatiana, are you are you next? Are you going to be presenting for Agark? Uh, I believe Dean will be presenting. Dean, are you here with us? Dean, Dean Treble is our CEO at Agoric. Oh, there he is. Hello there. So, uh, hey, Dean. I'm Dean. hi there. I'm Dean Tribble. I'm CEO of Agoric and have been working on smart contracts since the first production one in 1989. <laughs> no way. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to hear more about that in oh, a yeah. little bit. Was that before you were born, Connor? <laughs> oh, yeah. Six years before. <laughs> right. That was before the internet was born, sadly. So, you know. <laughs> Wow. All right. Um, and then Paul, you want to go next? Yeah, sure. I'm happy to be here, guys. I'm Paul from Band Protocol. Um, so I I won't be talking um, much in this call. It's going to be Swick, um, who's going to introduce um, him to it next. Um, but me, I'm doing um, product um, and, you know, like mostly um, uh, integration and also um, partnership at Band Protocol. Um, you know, super excited um, to be here, super excited about IBC and, and, and what we see uh, at the end of this hackathon. Awesome. Thanks so much for the intro. It's good to have you. Um, cool, guys. So I will just show off real quick. Um, so we're really excited for this hackathon. I think at Gitcoin, uh, we've been kind of looking at cross-chain as, as our future is going to go. Um, cause there's so many good, you know, blockchain networks out there and it's, it's great to kind of support everything we can. And while we have been Ethereum focused, um, as of late, we have, you know, been expanding and, and supporting different chains in different ways. So I'm really excited to bring in all these groups and kind of see how these bounties can, can work off each other and work together um, and see what we can create. So before we dive into the presentations, uh, I just wanted to show you guys for anyone who hasn't seen or hasn't registered, um, the, the landing page is up on our site at hackathon.gitcoin slash crosschain. And you guys can't see this yet. Um, this will be go live on Monday, but I can give you a sneak peek of the prizes that we have. Um, so there's 11 bounties right now, three from Band, uh, I believe five from Agoric, and three more from Cosmos. And they're pretty interesting because a lot of them kind of uh, cross-pollinate one another um, and tie into, tie into each other. And I know the team spent a, a long, long time on these bounties. So uh, we're really excited to kick this off. It'll be a three-week hackathon instead of the typical uh, two weeks. And uh, as you can see, Griff Green is already freaking out about it in, on the town square. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so check it out. Um, come check out the town square. Check out the chat channels. See what's going on. And uh, look out for those bounties go live on Monday. Yeah, and on Town Square for when you when you get there, we're really excited about that new view. You're able to introduce yourself, let us know what you're excited about working on, just tell us what's going on in your case specifically during the hackathons. Um, as you can see from my background, I'm excited about it. I'll be on Town Square and um, and thankful for everyone for being on the call today. Cool. So without further further ado um let's uh dive into cosmos a little bit um peter chris do you want to take us away yeah uh thank you connor uh so let me share my screen 
here and go to present mode. Okay, uh, so uh, welcome everyone to the Crosschain Hackathon. Um, before I start, I just wanted to give a, a thank you to everyone who's been involved in this. Uh, so that's Tatiana, Dean, Mark, Paul, Swit, Kevin, Chris, Marco, Brent, Christine, Kelsey, and the entire Gitcoin team. Um, this hackathon wouldn't have been possible uh, without you guys, and I really appreciate all the hard work uh, that you guys have done. Uh, so for the agenda, I, I want to discuss why we're having a virtual hackathon. Uh, I want to talk about Cosmos as tech, um, the Cosmos SDK and IBC, um, and then talk about some of the challenges and swag that we have. Whoops. <laughs> so uh, why have a virtual hackathon? Well, Cosmos ran virtual hackathons before. Uh, in the past, in 2017, this is what Cosmos was doing. Um, and then a lot of the focus was for gearing up for the launch of the Cosmos Hub. And the team focused on launching that, and that was the first uh, public BFT-powered proof-of-stake blockchain and the first BFT system deployed at scale. And the team was able to successfully launch that uh, last year in March. And next, the focus has been gearing up for IBC and this protocol that connects all these blockchains together. And Chris goes, will go into that in more detail. Uh, but in general, what we really liked about virtual hackathons and what Gitcoin has is that it allows for more time and experimentation. So people will have, as Connor pointed out, three weeks versus you know just two to four, you know, two days to, to work on a hackathon. Um, so I wanted to go into uh, the tech. So I'm going to start talking about the Cosmos SDK. Uh, but before I get there, um, I'm going to first talk about uh, different types of blockchains. So if you look at generation one blockchains, they're like Bitcoin. And what developers could do is they could fork the Bitcoin code base. And that had payments, UTXO, proof of work. Uh, you could use the Bitcoin script. And this is basically like the area of control that developers had. And then Ethereum came along and Ethereum introduced smart contracts and you had you know, the EVM and the account model and proof of work. And this is where we saw dApps and this explosion of uh, ICOs and other things back in 2017. And now we're getting these generation three blockchains like Cosmos that are proof of stake and they're secure and modular. And I'm gonna go into that in more detail. And when I talk about uh, proof of stake blockchains, what Cosmos allows is application specific blockchains. So if you look at uh, just a simplified version of the uh, stack, you can see that for Ethereum, they have the application layer with the EVM. We could give everyone a uh, much more ability to interoperate, to use the unique features of each specialized state machine while bridging across to other specialized. Uh, most exciting area right now is in development application layer Application layer protocols sit on top of IBC. So if I, the, the blockchains from which they're receiving the messages actually sent them, hence authentication. Finally, ordering. Ordering allows applications which are written on, uh, with parts on multiple chains about their interactions with parts on other chains. Next slide. Packets uh, in IBC are the actual messages where all the action is at. So different packets, uh, just like different TCP packets can contain HTTP data or contain um, SMTP data or contain different different kinds of application data. Different IBC packets can contain different kinds of application data, token transfers, cross-chain account, abstraction, voting, cross-chain, et cetera. So next slide, if we visualize this all in a diagram, what does it look like? What does the path of a packet from one module on one chain to another module on another chain, uh, how, do you, how do we visualize that? So if we start out at module A on the left, number one, Module A decides that it wants to send some packet. It constructs that packet. It addresses it, identifying itself as the sender and identifying Chris and I often present IBC stuff together. And I will add the one point I always inject here, which is in the same way that developers don't need to know how all of the weird windowing protocols and IP layouts work inside of TCP IP in order to do amazing things across networks, you don't actually need to know all the details about, about about how IBC works in order to do amazing things across chains. So this is giving you a view of the awesome, you know, clockwork underneath. But if you just want to tell time, look at the face, right? Quite right. Uh, Quite right. Well put. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the 
and I, I think Peter will probably go into this. The while, while it's uh, true that in most cases you won't you won't need to get into the weeds here. I think challenge three with IBC links and a channel state explorer probably need to like get into oh, yeah. a bit here. Uh, <laughs> so I'm I'm glad that we got the the deeper introduction for developers who are interested. Yes, thank you, Chris. Um, and uh, we're happy to make this slide available too, so other people can look at it. Um, there, there's going to be plenty of resources. Uh, but to skip forward, um, just to go over just a few challenges, we have one more uh, that we're not showing. But the first one is, of course, we'd like to see people uh, build applications on the IBC protocol. Um, the other thing too is uh, we'd love uh, for you guys to provide regular weekly updates. So if you can uh, post in the town square section on uh, Gitcoin uh, or on GitHub on your regular weekly progress, uh, you'll be eligible for a Cosmos Agoric and uh, so that's kind of our incentive to keep you guys motivated during the hackathon and um, uh, you could get one of these uh, rare t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> and I know because the Agoric folks asked for them <laughs> too. Um, and then the last, mine. <laughs> yes, yes, like Tatiana. <laughs> um, and then uh, the last slide is kind of like, what does success look like? Uh, and what I put was, we'd love to see more novel, high quality uh, projects created uh, using the Cosmos SDK, IBC, Agoric smart contracts, and BAN's off-chain data oracles. Um, and we also want to have happy developers. So uh, Marco's on this call. I, I, I did forget to call him out, uh, but Marco from uh, Interchain GmbH, uh, he's going to have a Q&A weekly session. It's going to be starting uh, next week on Friday at 8 a.m. Um, and we're going to have that every Friday until the hackathon's done. And then uh, Chris was very uh, fortunate, uh, and I was very lucky that uh, he offered to do a, uh, a live session too on IBC. So that's going to be uh, next week on Friday too. So if you want that technical deep dive on IBC, Chris will be able to go over that. And then the last point is that we're going to have the Cosmos community discord. So if you guys have any questions, uh, we'll be in there as, uh, as well as many other developers. Um, so with that, I guess I will turn it over to the Agoric folks, uh, but please let me know if you have any questions. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much, Peter. Yeah, before we, we turn it over, does anyone have questions for, uh, for Peter? Contract in 1989. Uh, Mark Miller, our chief scientist um, and original founder, uh, wrote the Agoric Open Systems Papers in 1988, which were the first real articulation of software agents uh, building and participating in markets. And so we've been working on various of these ideas for a long time, but it was all pre-blockchain. All right, so, so what is a smart contract? Um, so so let's, let's talk about that. Um, well, actually, before I quite move there, the thing about moving the world economy online is that means it's not about the crypto environment. It's not about what we can build. It's what millions of developers can build. So this is all really the start of getting so that more and more people out in the world can safely build smart contracts. And if you're getting the whole economy online, it's more than one chain can host. It's got to be about what all the chains can host and what all the things that you folks can build out there uh, uh, can drive. And so, so that's our goal. And if there's any question about how to include more people building more stuff, we're interested. Okay. So what's a smart contract? Um, I bet most of you have participated a little bit in what you think are smart contracts, but it's really um, that you know what we've used for now 30 years is a contract-like arrangement expressed in code where the behavior of that code is enforcing the terms of the contract. So that means that Bitcoin is a smart contract because after all the coordination between the payer and the payee is all orchestrated by code in the middle and it enforces a particular arrangement. Now it's not very flexible. And what Ethereum brought to the table was that same kind of thing where users could provide their own uh, contracts to coordinate the, the, the activity and cooperation of multiple other people out there. But you have to realize that this idea predates blockchain by quite a bit, right? Venmo, PayPal, eBay, rental, you know, um, uh, 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 you know, Airbnbs and Lyfts and a lot of those things are about software running on a trusted third party that is coordinating the activities of a buyer and a seller, of a writer and a driver, of a tenant and a house owner, none of which, none of whom work 
for that third party. But what blockchain brings is the ability to, uh, I'll kind of skip past this here, but it's basically the ability to eliminate that trusted third party who is a vulnerable agent that one can compromise in the middle. And it means that you and I can build a program to act as that third party and coordinate the cooperation of people out there um, uh, without requiring big centralized engine to manage that, that customer information. Okay, so what are we building? Agoric is building a chain, but our primary focus is on what does it take to be able to build the smart contracts, right? These ideas of how to do smart contracting predated blockchain, predated internet, and it was really about cryptographic protocols between machines. Well, from our perspective, a blockchain is a machine built out of agreement rather than out of silicon. So I've got 100 machines in different parts of the world in different jurisdictions, all cooperating to vote and agree on what happened, on what the data was, on what the transaction was. And so that idea of being able to communicate between machines, partly it was the nascent idea that led to IBC that Chris Goes just described some of to you. And partly it motivates really a view of interoperating between chains and interoperating transparently between smart contracts on a chain. So here I show you multiple chain-like things abstractly where each of these little rectangles or each of these little, whatever you call them, quadrilaterals is a machine. And this chain is gonna be agreement between all of these machines. Now that consensus algorithm, you know, the best fast finality algorithm out there, the one that is, you know, that is um, uh, on multiple chains supporting billions of dollars is of course Tendermint and under Cosmos SDK. And so we're building on that. And so we are, we are starting out life as a Cosmos zone, of course, as are many chains. Um, but the same technology, Tendermint, Cosmos, et cetera, can run for consortium chains, can run for private chains, et cetera or run on single machines. And if you've got a good communication mechanism between chains, all of that looks like a uniform layer. So we build on top of that a model of execution with simple containers of synchronous programming, just like you're familiar with in browsers where a mouse click comes in, it computes a new rendering of the screen, and that transaction completes rendering that, the, that screen update, and then another keyboard press comes in or some other browser event comes in. Or in Node.js, where an API message comes in, and that triggers a bunch of behavior, it computes a new state of the application, and then goes on to the next, uh, the next um, API event. That same model is something that we use for smart contracts, but they can, but each transaction is not just an event comes in, like bid in an auction, and then this update of the state is now we have a different set of bids, but it's not just an update to the state of the contract, but it's also a set of messages to other contract. Like in a message comes into this box here saying bid, the message going out to the bank is transfer some money. And so the transaction is, here's the new state of the contract, and here's the messages to send to other contracts somewhere out there on the interconnected network of chains. And so these red links are, of course, IBC that Chris goes described. And uh, um, uh, uh, ICF, Cosmos, um, AIB, and Agoric started really on, on the engineering and the work of, of, of IBC um, uh, last June in Berlin, and Chris goes, Carried the standard for the, um, you know, carried the standard forward, and now that implementation is ready for you all to pick up and be able to stitch together chains into this nice uniform fabric of communicating agencies sending messages to each other. Above that, since of course we none of us want to program in assembly language, Agoric built a JavaScript engine, right? 20 million programmers, 18 million programmers, whatever the number is, across the world are familiar with writing in JavaScript. We want all those programmers eventually to be able to build smart contracts, that means we provide a language and a system that they can understand. So we have a secure version of JavaScript in which you can write smart contracts. And that's one of the primary things that is interesting on, on, on the Agoric network. Um, and with that, and in that, um, in that uh, secure version of JavaScript, you can have, if you're familiar with JavaScript, you can have a promise for the result of some asynchronous computation. Well, in this case, you can have the promise for the result of a computation running on, an, on another chain. And that promise can be an object 
that you send messages to. So I can have a promise for an auction on another chain and I send a bid message to it carrying my money from a third chain. When that message, and I immediately get a promise for the result of sending that bid message. When that auction resolves at the other end, I will get back a prom I will get back the the result of that auction. So my winnings or get my money back or what have you. So we have this communicating network of contracts um, running inside our system. So it's very easy in the same way that JavaScript got legs because you could build user interface components or you could build NPM packages for your web apps. In this system, you can build the same kind of packages for smart contract components and stitch them together and deploy them to the, to the chain and so forth. And underneath, it then allows you to use IBC to have that um, where you can send messages from one chain to another. Now, that integration with IBC is still early. So some of our challenges are about showing that off, getting that moving forward and, and so forth. But, but this is where the world is going. And then above this layer, so we stitch those together with what's called CAPTP, which is the object protocol that you don't need to worry about. It lets you send messages back and forth from your individual server machine for your web application to your on-chain application running on the, the Agoric chain. But then above that, oh yeah, there's messages flying back and forth. Finally, above that, we have the contract layer. And so this you may see ERTP, the Electronic Rights Transfer Protocol, and Zoe. If you're familiar with JavaScript programming, if I have a pointer to an image and I hand it to you, now we both have a pointer to an image. And so you're sharing pointers. That's the basic operation in object-oriented programming is I send you a message sharing something with you. Well, in this case, for what, what, we, what we add at the electronic rights transfer protocol level at the contract layer of our abstraction is JavaScript abstraction. So instead of just sharing the image with you, I can transfer it to you. And out of that now I can transfer you money. I can transfer you digital access to, 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 to a service that I'm running. I can engage in escrow exchange out uh, at this layer we build auctions and, and as I said, escrow and futures and forwards and uh, derivatives and all those kinds of DeFi abstractions and, and, and digital goods, we can build simply as components in JavaScript in the same way that you build user interface components or, or NPM packages. And so that's where the leverage of, 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 a, of the Agoric system starts to show up and is, is being able to program simply at this layer but be able to bring over crucial asset uh, currency at one point. So if it was a payment in Quat lose, which is some fungible token that I minted on my machine, I send you a payment in Quat lose. Well, it's it's just oh programming in JavaScript. I might have given you a pointer to a ball of mud. You don't know. So you go to the Quatlu issuer. This is the this is the 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 like sort of like the class in an object oriented system, but it's really the thing that will vet Quat lose. And you say claim this for me if it's actually quat lose. And if it's mm. not, throw a fit, right? Throw an mm. exception. Mm. And so I just mm. hand it to it and it gives you back a real quat lose authentically from the quat lose mint <laughs> if, that, if that payment that I sent to you was a payment in quat lose and it destroys the payment I sent to you. So it is now consumed and you have exclusive access. So, so when that finishes, you Excellent. both know it was really quat lose because the Quatlu mint, the Quatlu issuer vetted it and, 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 and asserted that. And you know you have exclusive access because you got it direct from the Quatlu vet. Now that works, that pattern works for NFTs as well. So if I've got concert tickets, I have the issuer from the venue, say Shoreline Amphitheater, uh, someone is going to sell me a, a digital ticket to get in there. I, well, they might have sold me a Quatlu, right? Um, so I take this thing that they claim is a digital ticket. I go to the issuer that I got from the venue. And basically what I'm asking is if I gave you this ticket at the concert, would you let me in? Right. And yeah. so I claim it from the venue. I now have exclusive access to a ticket that I know the venue will honor. Right. Awesome. And so that's part of the ERTP abstraction. And that's not, that's all in JavaScript in, you know, one line of code. It's right. very simple to use and compose. And indeed, if what I've got is a purse, I don't even need to do that. I get quat loose from you. I deposit it in my quat loose purse. And that works if it's quat loose and if it doesn't, if it's not. And right. so it's, it's very straightforward to compose. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very helpful. And I can see how this will be useful for the next million developers who are working <laughs> on crypto stuff. Yeah. Thank you. That's our hope. Yep.
And the goal is that abstracts local currency, remote currency, pegged currency from other chains, Ethereum pegged, Bitcoin pegged, all of that stuff you can use uniformly so that like the simple swap contract that do effectively does escrow is 20 lines of JavaScript code that any beginning programmer can understand. Okay, so let's talk for just a moment, if I may, if I have a few more minutes here about the challenges, which I have here, there we go. And I'm showing you them on the, on the page itself. Um, so we'll start at the bottom uh, because a, no crypto system would be complete without a stablecoin CDP implementation on it. So we want, we, you know, our biggest prize is for someone to just build that. Now this one doesn't have a lot to do with IBC or the interop other than everyone participating from everywhere is gonna to wanna to be able to use a stable coin for smart contracts on our chain. Being able to have one is convenient. It has, it'll be local. We are totally interested in connecting over stable coins, over IBC from other chains, but getting this implemented in JavaScript as an example for people will be a, an, awesome, uh, an awesome showcase and very useful on chain as people are going forward, forward building other stuff. It, this particular one has two elements of it that are bonus. One is adding governance, because you can do a stable coin and kind of hand wave the governance, but adding the voting for people to say, yes, I want to change the interest rate or whatever it is, is crucial. Tying it into an Oracle is crucial. And oh, look, we have an Oracle handy here. We'll talk more about that. Um, but those are two uh, important elements of doing this, but we're really interested in how far someone can get building a complete standard kind of stable coin that people can look and go, yeah, I see how you did that in JavaScript. That's awesome. The next one is, is the, 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 the second and, and last one that is first smart contract stuff in JavaScript, which is to build a reusable smart contract component, right? I mentioned auctions and escrow and that sort of thing. We have some of those implemented, like we have a covered call option. We have you know, some auction, we have a swap contract and that sort of thing. But there are hundreds of things one might, could build, thousands even of one could build that people might wanna reuse. Well, the challenge here is build some of those, use them, especially build a couple and use them together. And that might be build a insurance sales engine that sells an insurance contract that instantiates a claim contract for a claim that closes a, 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 a swap with, with a payer, or it might just be several derivatives elements that all work together. This is a fairly broad one, but interesting. And the idea is to build components that somebody else in the world is going to pick up and do something awesome with, you know, three months from now. Okay, then the next one is dynamic IBC. So the, all the, rest, the, the next two are IBC related. Um, and, and the whole point of this, this hackathon originally was really getting IBC working. IBC is you know, stitching, you know, being able to communicate these application protocols between machines. Dynamic IBC simply enhances that with being able to communicate new application protocols that the chains when they were first applied didn't know anything about when they were first deployed rather, didn't know anything about, right? In Go on Cosmos Hub, for example, um, Cosmo, uh, you, uh, in Gaia, you would have to compile Gaia and deploy it with the specific contracts like the transfer contract in order for it to work there. Well, this, in, in, this, in the dynamic IBC model, we want you to be able to on an existing Agoric chain, and this will work with Cosm Wasm or other, other virtual machine chains in the future. But for this challenge, it's on the Agoric chain deploy a new contract parsing a new protocol that wasn't there in the first place. In this case, it'd probably be the transfer protocol, which is the money transfer between applications, which means you can use the existing relayer, talk from the existing Cosmos uh, test hubs in order to transfer some atoms into a contract in, in the Agoric chain and do something with it. That's the first, the dynamic IBC challenge. The next challenge is define your own new protocol and, and con connect with that. And so the goal here is, you know, as I said, like in the, in the dynamic IBC challenge, it's, it's have an asset in one chain, transfer to the Agoric chain, have money in a third chain, transfer to the Agoric chain, and buy something in a smart contract on the Agoric chain. So this first one is really wire stuff up. The second one is define a new protocol, right? IBC is this tau layer that, that Chris Goes talked about, and then the new app protocol that solves your problem. So define a new app protocol. It might just be like the transfer protocol is expressed as a nice little JSON format, right? Defining a protocol is potentially easy. 
It's potentially, it's easy, certainly permissionless. And with dynamic IBC, it's straightforward to deploy both sides of your new protocol. So define one, deploy it, build something interesting. And then the final challenge here is entirely uh, uh, entertaining and self-serving. A long time ago, when we first deployed the Agoric testnet, we built a pixel demo that was inspired by the million pixel homepage. And it's a fun toy. It's fun for illustrating property rights and the kinds of uh, questions that Vivek asked. Um, and so, but it was built in a privileged position as part of our infrastructure. Well, we're big fans of very small kernels and no privileged position. And so the goal here is simply Take that app, which is now dead because it was written in a way that was that was that was entirely too special and privileged, and rebuild it using our new application protocols, using our new architecture, using Zoe, using ERTP on top of the current chain. And you know, if you do things using IBC or you do things using other stuff there, awesome and great. But it's got a nice, you know, there's an there was an existing thing and it just needs to be redone um, and 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 redone in a way that shows off how cool some of this stuff. So those are the five Agora challenges. And let me be clear that the IBC ones, we've got, you know, Cosmos, we've got band protocol, anything that ties the other participants of this fun, of this chain together um, uh, gets scores more points on those. And of course, makes it eligible for multiple different prizes. So make sure you look at all the prizes of all of us as you're thinking about what you're going to build. Any awesome. questions here? Awesome. I'm I'm pumped to see what comes back from the Pixel demo. I have a couple of hackers in mind too. I've made some interesting things soon. Excellent. Thanks for thanks for ending on that one, Dean. And yeah, awesome, awesome demo and and great feedback on looking at all the prizes before you choose what to work on as a hacker. There's a lot of great stuff. Um, and yeah, we'll have the last group from Band Protocol next. Connor, did you want to say anything before then? Um, so I, I just had one question and, and Dean, thank you so much for that presentation. And really, I love your enthusiasm. That was awesome. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can tell you're really passionate about this, but my question is about, uh, 1989. If you just have, want to spend like 30 seconds, you know, sure. what, what was that first smart contractor? Like okay. who was it with? How did it work? I'm, I'm curious. Right. So American information exchange was the brainchild of Phil Salem. Um, and it was, think of it as eBay for, uh, for consulting. And so you could, as a user of the system, and again, this was dial up on 1200 baud modems from a, from, you know, a, a Apple II or desktop, you know, win, or like Windows 3 box. It wasn't even Windows 3.1, right? And, um, and you could um, uh, propose that you wanted someone to, you know, uh, um, help you do a marketing plan associated with your business plan or something like that. And we had, you know, Mitch Kapoor, who founded Lotus Software. We had Esther Dyson. We had lots of people that were sitting there providing services on the system. So this was, this was a major deal. Right? And the thing is, the nature of that consulting agreement would be some amount of money I'm going to pay on agreement, some amount that I will pay when you deliver, and some amount of pay I will, I will pay if I accept what you delivered to me. And so there's elements of this that are enforced by the execution of the Amex in, the Amex. Uh, a machine where as soon as it's, you know the negotiation process was enforced by the user by the by the software and when i said when both of us said okay we agree to these terms then the money automatically transited when you submitted your answer to my problem the money the accept the, sorry the delivery money automatically was delivered if i looked at it and said no no i disagree i think this didn't cover what I asked for, it would throw it into a enforced process around dispute that had controls on what was allowed and so forth. And it was really deliberately set out separating the responsibilities of the software that enforced the contractual arrangement between the outside parties. And that was deliberate. Then, you know, concurrent with all of this, Nick Zabo had been thinking about a lot of these kinds of ideas. And we were all in a larger community that Nick was a part of Foresight and, and Xanadu and Hypertext and all those kinds of things. And this really crystallized and showed off a bunch of the key properties we like out of smart contracts, a, a, a bunch of the properties that Nick came back and characterized and said, you know, those things that you're doing there, those are really good ideas. And let me tell you why. And it meshed with all of his existing ideas that he was working on around smart contracts. And that's where the term got coined and where, you know, where Amex was really the first thing that prior to having quite articulated the category was really deliberately choosing things that fit in that architecture.
So that was that was how it was the first production smart contract. Because as I said, it went out to production, had multiple markets, it had a you know a, a small talk components marketplace, it had all sorts of things. <laughs> wow. I want to, I'm going to do some research on this because okay. I, I am, I am really curious on the history, uh, but that's the awesome. Post by Chip Morningstar, who recently joined us, who was one of the, who was like the, the VP of engineering for Amex at the time. And so he talked some about what they learned there moving forward that he brings to Agora. So. Amazing. Amazing. I'll check it out. All right. If we don't have any other questions for Dean, uh, I think we can move on to band protocol. And if anything comes up, I believe you'll be able to find him on Gitcoin and chat around the town square. So, and I too will also be, by the way, we'll all be paying attention to the Cosmos uh, 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 Discord as well as, of course, the Gort channels. But but the Cosmos Discord is the place to to start with. Cool. I'll make sure to join. Awesome. All right. Well, that so that that was two longish ones, but we could definitely go over the hour. Uh, we tend to do that on the best live streams anyway. So, uh, band protocol. No, no, it's great. It's great. We loved it. Um, who do we have from band? You have me, Paul. Here, um, I'm here with our, our CTO as well. Sorry, we um, so uh, sweet here. Um, can you guys hear me or hear me? Yep, we can. Awesome, awesome. All right, so um, captivating presentation by both, um, you know, Cosmos and Agoric. Um, we we at Band Protocol have been um quite quite a long time user of Cosmos ourselves. So we build blockchain on on Cosmos, and now um we are super excited to be able to um contribute back and super excited to you know get um being a part of the IBC. And um up next um uh, my um, my co-founder um, and NCTO of Band Protocol, um, Sweet, will be talking, you know, about what is Band and how we do um, inter uh, cross chain communication with Cosmos, right? And then then we we'll tap a little bit into, um, you know, our like our, our little demo um, that actually demonstrate how the IBC works um, and what we um, sort of actually use um, in in our production um, and trying to get the Oracle. Um, protocol running um, and get everyone everyone here on, on Cosmos to view on it as well. Awesome. Did you guys see my screen? Yes. Uh, yep. Yep. Okay. Let me click present. Okay. Um, just one second. Okay. All good, right? Uh, yeah, so hi everyone. I'm, I'm sorry with, I, as Paul said, I'm the CTO of Band Protocol. So I'll, I'll try to keep this short, but in this little presentation, there'll be two parts. One part I will talk about, you know, the overview of Band Protocol and the, the challenges we post on this hackathon. And the second part, we will, you know, present some demo, just a quick demo to, 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 for you guys to get the sense of like, you know, how the IBC actually works, you know, apart from just the theoretical, how do you actually, you know, program the blockchain to communicate between each other. Okay, so so that's it. Uh, so let me start by talking about Band Protocol Overview. Uh, so as you probably know, we are decentralized data oracle protocol. What that means is that we connect off-chain data, right? Uh, like price data or identity data or sport data, right? We have our own economic incentive to make sure that data is trusted, bring it to band chain, and then from band chain, you can relay that data onto other layer one blockchains, right? Or Cosmos using IBC or Polkadot or Ethereum. We have full implementation of you know bridging architecture with Ethereum. So that's band protocol. And our team is quite diverse. Uh, you can see it from the slide. And we are backed by Binance among other investors. Okay, so let me uh, touch point quickly on this. Uh, I, we want, I want to stress that you know DeFi is growing very rapidly. And if you look at you know the history growth of DeFi back you know one year is 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 crazy you know in all other in all every categories right you know lending protocol stablecoin derivatives and dexes right and we think uh, you know this growth while it like right now is on Ethereum it will not be limited there right you know many layer one protocols are getting deployed in production this year you know Cosmos IBC is also getting ready right. I think I think it's very important for DeFi, right? Or you as a hackers, right, to try to you know build, you know, this capture this growth, yeah, right, onto other platform as well. And if you notice that, if you notice, you know, the 
the fourth row of, of, this, of, of, of the table, you can see that you know, all of these protocols actually require Oracle data that is fully flexible. And you know, we want seamless support to different blockchain. I already talked about this. And we actually also support uh, both public data, right? Data that you can actually get from the web uh, and also private data. In that case, we have payment layer on, on chain right, as well. So you can actually pay for data on band chain and then get the data ready for, for your application. So, so that's quite high level. Uh, so I want to go just a little bit lower level to talk about how band protocol works in, in a more simplified version, right? Uh, wait, sorry, how do I go back? There we go. <laughs> My laptop is very slow right now. <laughs> okay, so as a simplified version, this is very specific to Cosmos, right? So if you are building your Cosmos application, you can send an IBC packet, an Oracle request packet to band chain, right? And that packet will encode, you know, which Oracle script to run and also the call data, right? The parameter of that script, right? And that script is already de deployed on band chain, right? The script is essentially very similar to smart contract, but very specific, right? So the script encodes, you know, which data sources do you want, right? You know, Binance, CoinGecko, Crypto Compare, for example, if you want price data, right? And also, how do you aggregate data from different sources among different data providers, right? And and that is, you know, coded on onto the the blockchain, right? And once this is received on band chain our validators will pick up the request and then inspect the request and go through the sources, right? To submit it back onto band protocol, right? And once the process is complete uh, on chain, we will aggregate the data using your code, right? Uh, to get the final value. And that will get sent back to Cosmos to your blockchain using the same IBC protocol now as the Oracle response packet. Right, so essentially what you are doing on your app is just you request data and you get response and you don't need to worry about how you can get your validators, right, to manage to, to come together and, and submit data. How do you ensure that, you know, all the script is running correctly? That is, you know, part of the band protocol, right? So we right. kind of provide this. And, and could you give some examples? So the data sources that are provided here, these are um, financial data sources. Are there other examples of like types of data sources that you, you, you could think of for different types of applications? Yeah, uh, I mean, I, mean, I, mean I, think, I think the most obvious one is like prediction market of, of gaming or gambling supported. And the third challenge is quite similar to the second challenge, but now, you know, with, you know, uh, different other kinds of application, right? I mean, DeFi is big right now, but, but other things can, can, can come too, right? So, so, you know, this is, you know, other real world data, you know, weather data, sport data, or anything that you, you can get creative. And, and this is the, the third challenge. Um, one other thing that I want to stress is that, um, you know, at, at, at the launch time, um, at the beginning, we probably won't have, you know, all the data sources for you. Right. Um, but um, here's the thing, um, whatever you, data that you want from the internet, um, you can come and talk to us and we'll, we will facilitate so that um, that data is available on band protocol. Right. Um, so, you know, any data at all that you want, talk to us. Awesome. Awesome. And there was one question in the chat um, on the validator side, um, mm -hmm. specifically maybe not for the hackathon, but generally like how, how many validators are band looking to onboard? How many have been onboarded thus far perhaps? Yeah, so, so I mean, the, the, the maximum limit of validators is, is very similar to Cosmos at the moment. It, it's 100 and, and we will translate to 125 when it's ready. Uh, in terms of right now, uh, we have onboarded uh, 17 uh, very, very reputable validators to onboard band chain on the initial minute launch. And we are also onboarding a lot of you know community run nodes as well. We have quite a strong community, you know, in Asia and also in, in everywhere. So, yeah. so so that's the initial uh, starting point of the validators. On testnet though, it will just be us running like a few nodes. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Cool. Thank you. Okay. 
And next thing, uh, I think Peter talked about this a little bit, but we actually have been collaborating with Cosmos to write a very compre comprehensive guide of building a simple DeFi application using IBC protocol to connect to both Cosmos and Band protocol, right? So, so, so this will be from scratch. Like you clone kind of like a, a basic Gaia and then you know build a new module and run a relayer and everything, right? And 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 we will publish this in in a few days. Uh, but with this, you will learn how to create your first Cosmos blockchain with IBC and how to set up the the relayer for token transfer, right? To transfer Atom from from the Gaia to your blockchain and also how to consume price data uh, from band protocol on your blockchain as well. But I actually am gonna be showing the end result of this uh, tutorial, you know, in, in, in this call. Ooh, cool. So yeah, so it's just a quick overview about what this system is about. Uh, what we are building is what is what we call gold chain. It's a blockchain for, for minting synthetic gold. Uh, it's the, 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 the mechanic is very similar to MakerDAO, but pegged to a gold price instead, right? So, so it's like one, one gold token, it's like one ounce of gold, right? And what happened, what happened is that, you know, uh, you, we have a relayer that, that you can send Atom token from the Gaia testnet. Uh, we are uh, spinning up our own testnet right now for Gaia and send Atom to the gold chain. And then you can use this Atom as the collateral to mint for the gold, to the gold token, right? And this, you will need to consult band protocol for the current price of both the gold price in dollar and atom price in dollar, right? To know how much gold token can be mint without getting under, collater under collateralization, right? So this is, you know, the, the demo that I'm gonna be showing. Uh, yeah, and yeah, let's get to it. So can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, we're still on the Google Slides. Um, okay. You can see my terminal, right? Now we can. Yep. Okay. Uh, so first, let me show you this uh, page first. This is the Bandchain Explorer. We deploy it specifically for, for the hackathon already. And you know there are four nodes mining blocks, and it's coming, and there are transactions. The, what interesting, though, is we built the IBC page as well. So this will show. Uh, the the incoming packet to band chain like like oracle request and also the outgoing packet from band chain to other chain right this is go, going to to the chain called band consumer uh, so so you, you know with this you can explore what's going on with with the IBC packet you know to and from band chain uh, but let me get into the command line first so here I have uh, four tabs right the first tab is actually uh, the gold chain that is that, that is running on my local machine, right? Uh, I have the band chain and and Gaia chain actually running on on, on AWS right now. It's up on the cloud, uh, but this is the the gold chain. The second tab is a relayer. This is a relayer connecting between the local gold chain and the Gaia blockchain. Okay, you can see it's it's connecting from band consumer. The relayer the relayer actually picks up the trans the packet on Gaia. Right, and it will relay the packet onto the gold chain. Right now, the packet is already relayed. So if I go back to gold chain, uh, before this, I have, uh, I have this much atom, the sixteen something. If I check my balance right now, you can see that I have more atom now. It is actually transferred from the Gaia to this gold chain. Okay, so this is the first step of you know transferring token right this is built in on, on cosmos already uh and there's not no, no more code to be written for you uh, it's all on 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 the packet on 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 the the, the exporter okay so this is done uh on the next step is that we will send the the buy transaction this is not buy it's actually you know like minting the gold token right uh and to to the to the gold chain and what happened is that when you send this to gold chain, gold chain will send a request to band chain asking for the price data, and then band chain will reply back. And after band chain replies back, the gold chain will resume the execution and mint the gold token for you. You know, depending on the price. So I will copy this command, and I'm already to see what's going on. 
and then decision, right? And this is the return result. We can go to the request, right? This is R7, request number seven. It say that it requests to these four validators, the, the phishing guy, the evil guy or what, right? And it actually have a lot of information. It actually wants data from two sources, the Binance, the, the Binance price of Atom and the gold price. And this is the parameter, the, the multiplier, and this is the final result. And the raw data report from each of the validator. So, so this validator for the data number one, the, the gold price, it reports this uh, dollar per ounce. And for number two, it reports this atom price, right? And, and they are all reporting the same data because you know, they are executing it very pretty much the same time, right? And we can actually go into the Oracle script to see what exactly is written onto the Oracle script, right? Uh, we can go into the code. We call it Oracle Web Assembly without actually needing to, 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 to run the blockchain or, or, or pay the real gas fee. Mm -hmm. right? And if we go to the, the third data source, this is the Binance data source. The code, obviously, it will get data from Binance and then do some parsing and get the mid price between bid and ask, right? Uh, if you test execution, you can, you know, see Adam, you get the price of Adam. If you type ban, you get the price of ban token. Uh, yeah, so this is the sources. Uh, and as Paul said, uh, currently on, on the test set, we just have a few data sources, but we are happy to write more for you, you know, depending on what you need. It's, it's quite simple, as you can see. Uh, it, it can be any script, and then our, our, our validators will be happy to run and, and get the data for you. Yeah, this is awesome. So, and oh, yeah, if I if I could ask one question, just on gold as an example, if like two or three oracles end up with slightly different prices, how does the how does the system account for that? Yes. So so it's actually depending on you, right? Uh, this we call a built-in function called load average. So it's actually take the average of all the result, right? The number one here is like matching this. This is what we call external ID. So like. If you, you load number one, you get the result from the request for one. The five is the, is the data source, right? So this, you can, we, we have our own built-in like load average, load majority, load median, but you can also go low level and get each of the numbers, right? And decide right. what to do with it. You can filter out outliers. You can, you can basically do anything with it. Makes yeah. sense, makes sense. And a related question in the chat from Adriana was how long does settlement take when you when you're using this data? Yeah, so as soon as data is coming from, from validators. So if we look at the, at the transaction, at the transaction, uh, you can see that it's a little bit grumpy here, but, but we get the, 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 the data request packet on block 25. And then uh, our block time is about one, one second. So you know, in, in the next three seconds, the first validator report data. And then on the next block, the other three validators come to report. So you know, as soon as the enough validators report data, then if you kick off the aggregation process and send the data back to you. Awesome. Thank so you. So this is like three so seconds. Yeah. Fast finality, baby. Fast finality. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's a quick demo from me. So yeah, and we will be we will be uh, conducting workshop also, uh, you know, in, in, in the next week and, and after that. So yeah, feel free to come join. And we have Discord channel too, uh, but we, we our Discord is, is quite new. We just set it up like yesterday, uh, but we'll be actively participating in the, the, the Cosmos Discord as well. So yeah, I'll be there. So yeah. Awesome, awesome. We're really excited to have you guys. Thank you for the great presentation. Uh, for the hackers, one last reminder, if you have Oracle data that you're looking for that's not currently in the system, uh, these are your guys to help you during the event. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And also, um, maybe one last thing. Um, I know, like, the, you know, this demo is a lot to take in, um, but no worries. Like, we are um, going to be um, actually publishing, you know, everything that we talk um, here, right? Um, and into a simple to understand and follow steps um, on the um, Cosmos block. In the, in, the, in the next couple of days. Um, and that um, I think should be a great starting point for anyone wanting to build um, on IBC, on Cosmos IBC. So um, yeah, keep an eye out. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, Paul. 
Um, awesome. Awesome. Cool. Well, um, yeah, but so before we go, I just wanted to say again, um, the, the prizes are up. You can see them on the Gitcoin Explorer. You can't quite see them on the hackathon yet until it goes live. Uh, but feel free to check those out. And um, to the band Agoric, uh, Cosmos guys, if, if you could, if you wanted to post uh, you know, your slides or your Discord links or anything um, in the town square here, I'd encourage you to do so. I think it's the easiest way for everyone to find those links. So you will need to register for the hackathon and then you'll see um, the town square tab right here. And along with the chats, we have chat channels for each sponsor and a general channel for the hackathon as a whole. So. Uh, please do check those out, both hackers and uh, and sponsors and mentors. And we're really excited to get this one started.